Germany's most famous actress in Hollywood during the 1930s was Dietrich. When war blazed across Europe, she opposed the Schmazi regime and sided with her adopted country, becoming a U.S. citizen in 1941. Though not technically a spy, Dietrich volunteered to help the OSS by producing propaganda, radio programs broadcast to Axis countries, right? Remember when our girl Britney Spears was doing it? Much like our friends Taylor Swift and Beyonce are now? You gotta keep these people distracted and dazzled by the progress in the Western Hemisphere so they don't get up to bad things. Mm Mm-hmm. Get funny ideas about controlling the world and supplies of certain resources. Featured in those shows was Dietrich's famous song, Lily Marlene, which German soldiers were barred from listening to. After receiving many letters in protest, Schmazi officials rescinded the order and her song was played at the end of German broadcasts, according to the CIA website. It's no secret that Fleming drew on his experiences in British naval intelligence during World War II to write his popular James Bond spy novels. But before becoming an author, Fleming concocted schemes that British commandos used to undermine the German war effort. One of his ideas, planting false plans on a unalive body, was used to mislead the, not- the Schmazis before the Allied invasion of Sicily in 1943. Another plan may have been the basis for the disastrous Dieppe Deep Dieppe raid in 1942, a hit and run attack on the French coast. According to historian David O'Keefe, Fleming devised the attack as cover for grabbing an enigma, the Schmazi's ultra secret cryptography machine from German naval offices in the French seaside town, but the mission failed resulting in the unalivings of nearly 1,000 British, Canadian, and American commandos. Quote, There is no doubt concerning Fleming's central role in the Dieppe operation, right from its inception to its delivery, O'Keefe wrote in his 2020 book, One Day in August, Ian Fleming, Enigma, and the Deadly Raid on Dieppe. His inclusion as the anchor man in the relay tasked to bring the pinched material home wasn't enormous and in hindsight irresponsible risk that one does not take unless the stakes are of the highest order, unquote. Before she was famous, Julia Child worked for the OSS during World War II. She assisted with research on a number of projects before taking on a bigger assignment, cooking up a recipe for shark repellent. Child created, quote, cakes of copper acetate mixed with black dye that smelled like dead sharks that scared off living ones. Quote, child was more than just a secretary or file clerk, unquote, Olka said. She worked directly for the chief of the OSS registry. Perhaps no celebrity spy has become as notorious as Grant. Two authors alleged the movie star worked for the FBI and British intelligence in helping ferret out schmatzy sympathizers in Hollywood and others with possible connections to the German regime during World War II. In the 1980 book, Errol Flynn, The Untold Story, Charles Higgum wrote that Grant exposed Errol Flynn as a supposed schmazi agent. (gasps) The author claimed to find government records implicating the film legend, though no one else has ever substantiated the claim. Some historians and Flynn's family have denied the accusation. In 1980, the Washington Post reported that Flynn's former secretary believed her employer was a spy. Jane Chessis claimed she found letters from known schmazis in Flynn's files. When she heard about Higgum's book, she remembered saying to her husband, Oh, they finally found out about Flynn! Unquote. Grant also spied on Count Kurt von Haugwitz Hardenberg Reventlow, the German-born husband of heiress Barbara Woolworth Hutton. According to Mark Elliott's 2004 book, Cary Grant, A Biography, it's not known whether his surveillance turned up anything, but it did have another kind of success. 
the actor married Hutton in 1942 after she divorced the Count. Get it, Cary Grant? That's right. Assert yourself. Elliot alleged Grant served as a volunteer spy for J. Edgar Hoover during World War II and may have had to keep tabs on his wife. (gasps) There can be little doubt that Cary Grant was a special agent or contact for the FBI assigned prior to and during the war to spy on Barbara Hutton, the author wrote, noting that Grant was never investigated by the FBI during the Red Scare of the 1950s, despite a, quote, known communist connection, unquote, and may have been protected by Hoover. While spy work can be dangerous, many celebrities and stars in the making wanted to do their part. At a time of international crisis, quote, they were patriotic and were determined to help their country, Olka said. It was wartime, and they volunteered to do whatever they could to support the fight against the enemy. Mm-hmm. 